Greetings guys, gals and non-binary pals and welcome back to my final virtual pride video. I hope that you are all doing well. I hope that you are all fighting for what is right because there is a lot to be fighting for at the moment. As per my last few videos and for probably the rest of the videos that I ever make, in my bio there is a link to a collection of donations and petition links on my website for causes such as what's going on in Poland, what's going on in Yemen, the Black Lives Matter movement, and an entire page of just other issues that need more attention. Today I am doing a, another history, and since it is Pride Month, I am going to be doing another LGBTQ plus woman. A couple of weeks ago, I did Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. That link will be up here and also in the description if you wanted to go check that out the pioneers of the LGBT plus fight for liberation. And today I have another very important key figure from around the same time. And her name is Martha Shelley. Martha Shelley was born in Brooklyn in 1943 and she moved to Bronx for high school. And there when she was 17, she joined an all women's judo class. It was here that she was first exposed to lesbians. And as she said about it, it was an all women's judo class. Who do you think is gonna join? About half the women were gay. And I love that. <laughs> and in this class, she made a lot of friends, including one woman in particular, who she started riding home with on the subway every day. And one day this woman asked her over for dinner and Martha went over and had dinner with this lady and her husband. And then when her husband went to bed, the two of them went into the lounge and uh, had a little fun together. <laughs> it was the first time Martha had ever kissed a woman before. And she said that it was just a very different feeling to kissing boys. And that she had this thought of, oh my God, this is what I am this is who I am, and I'm gonna burn in the fires of hell for it. This happened in 1960, so Martha was very, very confused because she'd never heard the term lesbian before. There wasn't very much exposure to it at all, obviously. It was all very, very taboo. So she would hang out at like old bookshops and libraries and things and read whatever books she could find about it, which included a lot of lesbian pulp fiction, and she said it was all absolute crap, terrible books. But she learned what a lesbian was and it kind of made her feel more validated. She's like, okay, there are other people like this. Because she was reading these books and like pamphlets and things, including like pamphlets about how being gay is a psychological disorder, <laughs> she found a few LGBT plus organizations, the Mattachine Society and Daughters of Bilitis. I don't know if I said either of those right, I'm gonna call the Daughters of Bilitis D.O.B. throughout this because I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> and when Martha was 19, she left home and she moved into a cheap, grotty motel in New York. And she started hanging out at a lot of lesbian bars, which she hated. She hated them so much because they were all really dark and stingy and you couldn't see outside and people couldn't see inside because it was like really dangerous if men saw in and men knew what was going on, they would find it their masculine duty to come in and beat up all the women. Another reason Martha didn't like all these lesbian bars and hanging out in them is because there was a very obvious separation of like two different types of lesbians. There were femme lesbians and there were masculine lesbians. She said, I didn't want to be put in either of those categories. It seemed like amputating parts of what I did, making me follow rules about the way I behave. So she, she'd always felt this strong urge to push against rules that just didn't make sense to her, including being told she had to fit in one of these boxes. She hated that idea that she had to be one thing or another and not just be herself. She didn't want to dress or act like a man or follow any rules set for a man or by a man, but she also didn't have any intention of following any feminine stereotypes either. And so this put her in a really conflicting situation where she just felt kind of uncomfortable around other lesbians because there was like a pressure to be one or the other. In 1967, she started attending DOB meetings regularly and surrounding herself 
by these people and these other lesbians it was the first time she ever felt good about being a lesbian because it was very inclusive of everyone it was there was light there was conversation and it wasn't just being in a dingy bar where women were trying to pick you up and in those bar scenarios it was very much looks based right like you see a cute girl you go and approach her and martha said you know she wasn't that attractive and so people she never really had much interaction with other lesbians however in this situation of dob it didn't matter it was all personality focused and meeting people and having conversations with people that you had things in common with and you were all there to mingle and to just try to exist as who you are it was around this time as well that after years and years of rejecting femininity and female gender roles and just separating herself from women or heterosexual women at the very least she was recommended to read a book called feminine mystique by betty frieden which is a book sort of all about how women aren't satisfied with the roles that they've been assigned and how a lot of women feel really unfulfilled being housewives and being mothered and being made to be a man's property and this really opened martha's eyes and made her sort of realize that she wasn't the only one who wanted to reject these assigned roles and that a lot of women wanted to reject these roles and she felt a really strong connection with that and so she wanted to fight with and for women and their liberation of being their own individual people and not having to follow these assigned roles as well as being a part of dob she would also go to like feminist organizations and feminist meetings as well martha was very very vocal and so she would always put herself out there and she would always go to like protests and anywhere where they were speaking involved so she quickly became the president of dob which meant she was doing like interviews radio interviews and just being the front person of the movement because a lot of people obviously wanted to remain closeted because being out could cause you to lose your job it could cause you to be kicked out of home it could cause you to lose everything effectively but martha didn't mind she just rebelled against everything and was willing to face the consequences of that so she quickly moved up and became the front person of the movement it's quite funny because she actually started an affair with this man called bob martin who was the leader of a different lgbt organization that focused on gay men so the president of a lesbian organization and the president of a gay organization were both in a heterosexual relationship together and that was such a big scandal that like walk into all these meetings for gay people like arm in arm and everyone was like what the fuck is going on there's straight people in here and she thought that was pretty hilarious <laughs> like she wasn't bi like from her she wasn't bi she was lesbian the man she was seeing was bi but she was just doing it just for some fun that was really it and she just thought it was quite funny to walk into all these gay meetings and have them be like okay <laughs> bob also actually introduced her to lsd and she said that taking lsd really helped open her eyes and she developed a new perspective of reality and she was able to break down more walls than she already had and dissociate from the binary and set roles even more than she already had prior and it just really helped her with her activism and what she wanted to fight for as time went on she moved to greenwich village and started doing like graphic designing and things because she really enjoyed that as well as being able to focus more on her activism stonewall was in greenwich however she never actually attended stonewall and she didn't go to the riots she did however walk past the riots when she was giving these two women a tour of the town and she just thought that it was an anti-war riot because those happen quite regularly and she was just like oh it's an anti-war riot chill <laughs> but then she read about it in the papers and she she kind of had this thought she's like right there's there's these riots going on but we can't just leave them as the riots. riots from gay people had already happened in california and nothing came of it there were riots and then nothing because no one organized anything to happen afterwards so she knew they had to organize something to happen after those riots because otherwise it would die out this was their opportunity to come in and be like listen to us 
So she came up with the idea of a march. She needed to march. So she called the former leader of DOB, Jean Powers, and she said, we need to march. And Jean told her to call the leader of Mattachine, Dick Lation. Dick Lee. Leeshin, Dick, I don't know how to say his name, Dick Leeshin, who was just not a very nice person. He would like steal money from the organization and he was misogynistic and he was just a terrible guy. However, he was the head of this organization because he was one of the only people who was willing to put himself out there as a gay man and speak publicly, whereas a lot of the members didn't want to be outed, uh, as I said before, in fear of like losing everything that they had. So unfortunately, she had to go through him and he wasn't keen. He didn't like the idea at all, but he said, put it to a vote with the members and we'll see what happens. And when she put it to a vote, everyone agreed. <laughs> like everyone, there were 400 gay men and they all agreed, which is brilliant, really. It's just brilliant. And uh, they were all having a discussion about the march with Dick in a different room. And they were drinking some beers and uh, Martha just came up with this idea of Gay Liberation Front. She's like, that's what we are. We're the Gay Liberation Front. And she banged on the table really hard. Uh, she actually smashed her hand onto like a beer bottle and it, her hand was bleeding. But she didn't care. She came up with this brilliant idea to create this brand new organization called the Gay Liberation Front. And the reason that she wanted to create this brand new organization is because most of the LGBT plus organizations were very conservative. They were like anti-socialism and they didn't want any socialists or anything in their groups because they were like, well, we're trying to be these normal people. We want to be accepted by society. We can't have any people who are like liberal in here. We need to fit in. And they just wanted these perfect, tidy little lives. Uh, so they didn't want socialists. They didn't want like radical leftists or any of that. And then a lot of the like socialist groups didn't want any gay people because same reason, they're like, we don't want gay people to ruin our movement. We want them to think that we're, you know, that's, that's sort of how it went. So Martha had this idea of creating the Gay Liberation Front, which is just a group of gay socialists effectively. And Dick was very upset by the fact that she wanted to create a brand new organization, literally while he was in a different room. She, he, she was talking to the members of his organization and was like, we need to create something new. And he was like, "The fuck! this is my, get out. This is my organization. Stop stealing my members. But she lied to him and said, no, 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 no. We're just calling, we're just calling the March, the Gay Liberation Front. We're not, we're not starting a new organization. I don't know if he actually believed it, but he went along with it. <laughs> Martha had to call the police, which was terrifying. She did not want to call the police at all. Uh, but she had to call them to ask if she needed a permit for the march. So when she called them, she didn't tell them what the march was for. She's like, do I need a permit to have a march? And they said, only if you have sound equipment, which she didn't need. So she was like, sick, don't need a permit. We can just freaking march. And so they organized the march for one month after the Stonewall riots happened where they took to the streets and again, as I said in my Stonewall video, she stood up and she was like, we are going to march to Central Park. And that is what they did. There was a group of gay people all marching and it was the first time gay people had openly marched. This march and the Gay Liberation Front would not have been able to happen if not for alliances with other organizations such as the Black Panthers, which was an organization to protect black people from police brutality. There was also the Young Lords of Spanish Harlem, which were a similar thing, but for Latino people. And then also the Women's Liberation Group were involved in that as well. So having the alliances with all these other organizations for other oppressed groups and minorities really helped back it. And they kind of joined in on the march as well. And they all supported each other. And there was a lot of integration among these groups of people now. And the Gay Liberation Front couldn't have happened if it weren't for other civil rights movements previously happening or happening at the time. I'm kind of jumping all over the place. I'm really sorry. <laughs> The Gay Liberation Front wasn't just fighting for gay rights, it was fighting for equality. It was fighting for like reproductive rights, like being pro-choice. Uh, it was fighting against racism. It was fighting for freedom to be able to take drugs if you want to and not go to jail for it. It was fighting to get people out of jail for minor drug crimes. It was 
fighting for women's rights. It was fighting for true, true equality for everyone. And in 1970, it was the one year anniversary of the initial march. And so they did another march with even more people and they all marched together to Central Park. I realize I'm really stupid and I forgot to say a really important thing. And that is that this march, the 1970 march, was actually the first Pride. So that march took place every year after that and it evolved into what we now have as Pride. From the Gay Liberation Front, there were other organizations created. There was STAR, which is the Street Transvestite Alliance Revolution. It was created by Martha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, which I talked about in my video a couple weeks ago. And then there was Lavender Menace, which was later named Radical Lesbian, which was a group of women and lesbians who were fighting both for gay rights and also women's rights. And they wrote up a manifesto which included noting homosexuality and heterosexuality are categories created by male dominated culture and in a society that didn't oppress women, both would disappear. Which, you know, kind of true. I can't, you can't argue with that. It also said that their aim was not to divide women by sexuality but unite them on the common cause of valuing themselves for themselves and not based off of what men think of them or their respect of them. They went to a meeting of women in Congress and when the lights were off, they put copies of their manifesto on all of their seats. And then when the meeting started, one of the members came up and said, we need to talk about lesbian issues and everyone agreed. And so they started doing like, workshops and sessions where they talked about lesbian issues and brought awareness to lesbian issues and just wanted to focus on that and sort of make people more aware of it. However, in 1971, radical lesbians disbanded just a year after they formed because it had become quite a toxic movement where it became so women focused to the point where they dissociated themselves from all men and also heterosexual women, which defeated the whole purpose in the beginning of not separating women based on sexuality. But they wanted such a massive removal from men that that happened and women started feeling quite uncomfortable about it. So they started leaving and then the group all just fell apart. However, it was still very, very crucial to both women's rights and LGBT plus rights because it got the word out, it got people talking and it did spread word, it did spread awareness and it made people talk about it, it made people aware and it did spark more of a fight. The Gay Liberation Front was something that moved across the world. It was established in London in 1971 as well and in Canada. It, it sparked talk everywhere and it moved out from just being the GLF to creating, like I said, more subcategories underneath that and it sparked more talk around LGBT plus people's existence. And it just made people aware, it made visibility easier, and it just helped unite more people. The point of GLF was to fight for everyone. It was very inclusive, which wasn't a thing at the time. Like I said, a lot of gay people weren't welcome in a lot of organizations and a lot of black people weren't allowed into gay movement. And it was, it was very, very, there was no intersectionality. I guess is what I'm trying to say. It was a time where intersectionality wasn't a thing and GLF existed to have intersectionality. Martha continued fighting for so many issues throughout her life. Uh, she got married. She said that she would still be out there fighting now, but she has to look after her wife. Martha started writing a lot. She writes fiction and she writes poetry and she's released a lot of articles and poetry and books. She actually released a book last year and she's just living peacefully and happily with her wife and still holds all of her political beliefs and just did wonderful things and spent her entire life fighting for equality for everyone in whatever way she could. And she's just an incredible person that we should all look to and take note from. She never gave up and she fought for everyone always. And she is an inspirational and very strong woman. <laughs> and that is the story of Martha Shelley. Again, we wouldn't be where we are without her. She was such a huge, 
huge part in the LGBT plus fight for equality and we wouldn't be where we are today without her and all her effort and everything that she did. So everyone say thank you to Martha. <laughs> I hope that you learned something from this and you take something away and I hope that you have an appreciation for this woman and everything that she's done for us. There are so many women who deserve so much recognition that we don't really ever learn about or talk about and she is one of the many. So I hope that she gets at least a little bit more appreciation from this. Thank you for coming along. Uh, feel free to share this knowledge with some other people. Hit the share button, share this with some friends, get them educated because I think that again LGBT plus history especially with women is so important for us to know. It's so important for us to know where we've come from and how we get to where we are. So if you found this helpful and you think other people should know about her, please feel free to share this video. I am currently saving up for new equipment. So if you want to help me create better content and support me, I will leave my Patreon link in the description. I do share it with my best friend Kat because we do a podcast together and equipment upgraded for here would also upgrade my equipment for the podcast. Thank you heaps to our current Patreons, Izzy, Emily, and Amy. I love the three of you with my entire heart. You are, I love you. Thank you so, so much. Your support means absolutely everything to me. Once we reach 50 patrons, we will be doing a giveaway of some cool stuff that I have coming soon. Stay tuned for that. I'm really excited to share it with you. It's just three pounds a month to be a patron and it would mean the absolute world. Uh, there are perks and things there as well if you want to check it out. Like I say, the link's in the description. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any more content. I do stories every second Sunday and then I have a lot of other content too. Three uploads a week. So you don't want to be missing out on that, do you? No, of course not. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along. Again, all links for petitions and donations and things are down there as well. Thank you for coming. I've said that about five times. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you in a few days. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. And when you close your eyes, you replace.